The International Space Station stands as a testament to humanity's insatiable curiosity and the power of international collaboration. It is an orbiting laboratory that serves as a symbol of scientific exploration, technological innovation, and the unifying spirit of nations. The ISS is a joint venture between space agencies from various countries. Its construction began in 1998 and was completed in 2011, marking an unprecedented feat of engineering and cooperation. Located approximately 408 kilometers above Earth's surface, the International Space Station orbits our planet at a speed of roughly 28,000 kilometers per hour. It serves as a microgravity environment where astronauts conduct experiments in fields such as biology, physics, astronomy, and human physiology. Interestingly, in recent years, some strange discoveries have been made close to the International Space Station, which has caused some to conduct further research. One of these was a strange object that could be seen matching the space station's speed, which some described as being several miles in length. Those who were watching the live cam said that they caught a glimpse of something unusual. Many immediately took screenshots of the event and stated that an unidentified object could be seen on the live camera. The long object stood out against the clouds, with those who watched it saying that its movements became more deliberate and purposeful, as if it was keeping up with the space station. Suddenly, the mysterious object slowly started to rise up towards the International Space Station, all while keeping up with the space station's speed. As of right now, not much else is known about this object, but those who are interested in the unknown have said that this isn't the first time that something like this has been seen close to the International Space Station, and it's for this reason that many watch these live cameras in the hopes of spotting something unusual. Over the years, numerous reports and observations have emerged regarding unidentified objects spotted in close proximity to the space station. These sightings have sparked curiosity and speculation among both astronauts and the public, raising intriguing questions about the nature and origin of these mysterious phenomena. One of the earliest reported sightings of a strange object near the space station occurred in 2014, when Italian astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti captured an intriguing image during her stay on the space station. The photograph showed a blurry, diamond-shaped object outside the window, leaving many wondering about its nature. Astronauts are trained observers, with extensive knowledge of space debris and common celestial objects, making these sightings even more intriguing. Since then, numerous reports of strange sightings near the International Space Station have surfaced, with astronauts describing unusual objects, lights, or anomalies during their missions. These sightings range from brief glimpses to more sustained observations, and they often involve objects that exhibit flight patterns or characteristics beyond the capabilities of known spacecraft or space debris. Several possibilities have been put forth to understand the nature of these encounters. One hypothesis revolves around the potential presence of secret military experiments or advanced aerospace technologies. Given the classified nature of some projects, it is conceivable that these sightings could involve prototypes or advanced aircraft operating near the vicinity of the space station. However, such claims require credible evidence to support them. Furthermore, it is important to acknowledge that human perception and interpretation can sometimes be influenced by psychological factors. In the vast and unfamiliar environment of space, the mind may seek to find patterns or familiar shapes, leading to misinterpretations of visual stimuli. While many sightings near the space station can be explained by natural or human-made phenomena, a small percentage of cases remain unexplained, leaving room for further investigation and scientific inquiry. Recognizing the significance of these observations, space agencies and organizations are beginning to pay closer attention to such encounters. In recent years, there has been a shift in how governments and scientific institutions approach the study of mysterious sightings. Initiatives such as the U.S. Department of Defense's Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program and the establishment of dedicated task forces aim to collect and analyze data related to encounters including those observed near the International Space Station. By systematically collecting data, applying rigorous scientific methodologies, and utilizing advanced technologies, scientists and researchers hope to uncover the truth behind these intriguing sightings. The goal is to separate credible observations from misidentifications, optical illusions, or conventional explanations.
odd radio circles in the sky a genuine mystery. You might be familiar with UFO sightings and crop circles, but have you ever heard of a radio circle? In September of 2019, researcher Anna Kapinska delivered a presentation of objects she had discovered in the astronomical skies. There were a number of odd things that Kapinska recorded. These objects did not seem to fit into any category she was familiar with, and quickly began noting down their characteristics. One of these objects was an image of what appears to be a strange circle of radio emissions. Similar in appearance to a ghost's ectoplasm, the spooky sphere was unlike anything Kapinska and her colleagues had seen before. Amazingly, just a few days after the discovery, one of Kapinska's colleagues, Emil Lenk, discovered another. The team decided to name them Orcs, standing for Odd Radio Circles. The discoveries had been made thanks to the Evolutionary Map of the Universe, or EMU, project. The project is run with CSIRO's Australian Square Kilometre Array Pathfinder, or ASCAP telescope. The EMU project is tasked with peering into and plotting vast swathes of the observable universe that we have yet to see. The ASCAP telescope is well suited to this and it can cover much greater ranges of the skies than other telescopes and can take images at much greater distances. Since the project was centered on areas of space that had yet to be observed, the researchers expected to find something during the run of the project. Surprisingly, these strange radio circles were found almost immediately, and were found manually by the team. The team confirmed that the objects weren't just a glitch in the telescope's imaging software by using other telescopes to look at the same astronomical position. Puzzlingly, the scientists are unable to determine just how large the orcs are, and what distance they are from Earth. Ray Norris, one of the team's researchers, said, They could be objects in our galaxy perhaps a few light years across, or they could be far away in the universe and maybe millions of light years across. For now, the only thing that the team knows is what the orcs are not. The team managed to rule out a number of possible causes for the circles, including remnants of supernovae, evidence of galaxy formation, and Einstein rings. What is so exciting about this discovery is that the team themselves described it as a genuine mystery. Many astronomers dream to discover something so unlike anything we know to exist in the observable universe. But now they are discovered, the real work begins in trying to decipher what exactly these strange rings are and how they fit into the complex landscape of the universe. China's moon trip reveals surprisingly recent volcanic activity. Moon samples had not been gathered and tested since the 1970s until now. A recent Chinese space mission to the moon brought back two kilograms of moon rocks that suggest our moon had lunar lava activity which once occurred upon its surface. The Chang'e 5 lander landed in the Oceanus Procellarum moon region, which is the moon's volcanic plain. Chang'e 5 then rendezvoused with its mother vessel and safely returned to the Chinese space station's land point in the Inner Mongolia region of China. These samples, when analysed, showcased that the volcanic properties were only about 2 billion years old, opposed to the 4 billion the USSR and NASA's scientists found the moon volcanic plains to be when they analysed the moon missions of the 1960s and 70s. Planetary scientist from the University of Manchester, Catherine Joy, states, this is the youngest ever lava flow dated from the moon. The samples gathered by Chang'e 5 might have finally revealed to us the mysterious in-between of lunar geology, something researchers have been struggling with for decades. This discovery is a great step in improving our understanding of the formation and history of solar systems, moons and planets. This finding heavily suggests, if not outright proves, that the moon's volcanic activity was far more recent than we initially believed. The youth of these samples shows that as early as 2 billion years ago, the moon had active molten lava upon its surface. Lava, by its definition, is when magma is propelled to the surface of a celestial body from a planet or moon's core in an eruption. Lava leaves behind basaltic rock after it dries, and this is what the Oceanus Procellarum of the moon is, dried lava. It's thought the past volcanic eruption must have been intense given the large-scale area of the Procellarum. 
If we manage to uncover the exact age of the Oceanus Procellarum, we will be able to determine the geological moments of our solar system's formation using the dating of the moon's surface, craters, and rocks. By doing this, scientists will be able to use the same technique on planets such as Mars by counting and dating its craters and comparing them. Dates that align will show us a story of our solar system long before humanity came into being. The current mystery, however, is what might have caused volcanism on our moon and its surface during the time period in which Oceanus Procellarum was forming. According to Dr. Joy, the amount of magma being generated dropped off quickly, which means that it cooled as quickly as the lava formed. Researchers believe that radioactive components, thorium, uranium and potassium, might have caused the heat that resulted in the volcanic activity. Oddly enough, however, not a trace of radioactive materials were found in the analysis of the Chang'e 5 lunar rocks. An alternative theory is that the gravity of the Earth lent heat to the Moon. According to planetary scientist Alexander Nemchin, two billion years ago the Moon was significantly closer to Earth, maybe halfway closer than it is now, so this effect was probably amplified quite significantly. Scientists hope that the future will grant us greater research and understanding of the timeline of the solar system. The James Webb Telescope proves it can detect alien life. One of the biggest aims of astronomers, researchers and scientists studying the galaxy and the entire universe is finding signs of life, whether that be on other planets or the moons that orbit them. Working under the belief that the existence of water can be linked with the existence of any life form, Scientists have continued their searches by concerning themselves with the task of detecting the existence of water on Mars or Jupiter's moon, Europa. However, finding water and indeed life outside of our Earth is a very difficult and extraneous task because of the long distances and all the technology that would be required to send a single probe out to find and bring back samples. Using theoretical calculations, Astronomers have estimated that there are possibly about 300 million planets with the potential to be inhabited with life in the Milky Way alone. These planets are the same size as the Earth and have similar qualities that lead the astronomers and scientists to estimate that there is a chance that the planets are habitable. Yet, this information can only do so much, and researchers must use other tools and methods to glean further insight into these planets and the likelihood of their habitability. One such method is what is often referred to as looking for the biosignature. What this means is that astrobiologists study how starlight interacts with the different planets, or more specifically, the surface or atmosphere of those planets. If the surface or atmosphere of a planet contains evidence of life, the starlight will reveal that through a biosignature. Each time light bounces off a material object or passes through any kind of gas, Certain wavelengths of that light will either be contained within the object or gas, while other wavelengths will be emitted back out. This is how anything has color, for example. Plants are green because chlorophyll keeps the wavelengths of red and blue, but releases the wavelengths of green. The color that you see is the color that is not contained within whatever thing you are looking at. In the same way, scientists can guess whether a planet has life or not, by looking specifically at the colors that are reflected when starlight hits the surface or atmosphere. A way to think about this is our own Earth. In the first half of its existence, it only had a faint biosignature, because while there was some single-cell organisms of life on its surface, it did not yet have oxygen in its atmosphere. That changed when algae evolved and released oxygen into the air causing the Earth's biosignature to alter and become much more prominent and visible. Likewise, a planet that develops life or contains life on its surface will likely be detectable depending on the strength of its biosignature. Detecting the biosignatures of planets can be difficult due to various restrictions and limitations of technology and distance, which is why this new discovery by the James Webb Space Telescope is so exciting. Since beginning science operations in July 2022, this telescope has also detected water and clouds on a gas giant exoplanet. This data means 
that James Webb is capable of detecting the faint chemical signatures that come from other planets and will therefore be able to aid scientists in their search for life on other planets. And while the telescope was not specifically built for this task, its ability to detect biosignatures is a huge leap forward in searching for life on planets closer to home. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.